So for uh, for those of you out there who are just tuning in, this is our first uh, installment of our Eastern Elite Travel Ball Partners in our Stay Ready campaign. So um, we've got Patrick Lewis on right now from Georgia Impact 2018 PGF Champions. Um, one heck of a guy, runs a great program in Georgia and all over the Southeast. I think's where you're pulling your players from. Uh, talk a minute about Georgia Impact. Uh, state of that club, what's going on, uh, when softball's coming back, what they're doing right now. Yeah, you know, so just as a club, we're just trying to stay ready, is, which is kind of your guys' tagline you're going through right now. And, and just as this situation's fluid and nobody really knows, you know, Georgia kind of opened up the end of last week to a certain, a certain phase level. Parks haven't done anything yet. So just really trying to figure out what this summer is going to look like from a club standpoint and which teams are going to travel, which is not. I think you're going to find a lot of teams that – that stay kind of local within a few hour, few hour drive. But, you know, for us, my kids are all over the country. So we're, we're still kind of planning on playing a full travel schedule, which is, you know, the Colorado, Oklahoma, California, those things. So, man, just trying to be ready when they free us up to say play ball. So, like, what do you – are you guys working out and stuff? Like, are, are you putting workouts together for them? You guys meeting with them? I know you got Lincoln – um, who's, you know, yeah. pretty legit hitting guru dude on your side. So is he doing stuff with the players? Yeah, so, you know, we're fortunate with the coaching staff with Lincoln and Riker chasing from the pitching standpoint and, and you know, Scotty and Rick doing infield and outfield stuff. Or we have Zoom calls. The, the, the girls, you know, uh, got together. We're doing a lot of book reading stuff, a lot of accountability partners where they check in at least three times a week, make sure they're doing their workouts and the things that they're put out for them, whether it be from, from Riker or Lincoln and, and a lot of throwing programs. We're trying to get their arm care done so that when we're ready to go play, the arms are in the right place. So doing a lot of video work there and coaches eye, using blasts and all those sort of things uh, to try to, to try to do the things that we can remotely. Uh, the, the, the cool part I, I'd say that's the positive that's come out of this is normally, you know, our kids would be in high school ball and we'd kind of be fragmented. Um, I feel like this has brought our team closer together a lot earlier than, than we ever have. Um, kind of the daily interactions, the group texts going back and forth about who's doing what, and just the support's been been phenomenal. And I think it's going to just make us that much of a better team when it comes time to play. Your boy's in the background. Yeah, I got one right there. That's his current uh, yeah. cut. I just shaved his head. <laughs> he looks like he's going in the pool. Yeah. Well, that's what I did. You just got to trim it off, man. Yeah, man. Quarantine cut. Hey, so, like, we know you run a great program. What is it that – what is it that college coaches are looking for you to – how are they looking for you to develop a player? What do they want? What, like, travel ball is very important. I mean, they are relying on you to get them prepped for when they get them. Yeah, for, for us, it, it's about teaching kids to pay attention to the details, um, really understand what it means to work and be responsible for themselves, but at the same time be responsible for their teammate and, and – and to care about their teammates' success as much as their own. Um, it's something we preach all the time. Can you be as happy for the success of your teammate as you are your own? And, and really just not being a me society. Because, you know, when they walk in, they're on, they're on a much bigger rosters there. they got to work hard on their own um, and just be disciplined. And that's the sort of thing we try to instill in them. Uh, and I think that's why our teams have had a lot of success. Because that, that culture has been driven down year after year after year as the players, you know, return and, and continue to drive that. And then they carry that forward to to their to their college teams you know you, you look at the players we put in college and on team usa and they walk right in they play they contribute it's just a testimony to their work ethic yeah and i mean are you are you guys as an organization do you start that young with those 10 year olds 11 12 like are they learning like your style of play from down lower that's something we're trying bk is probably a little bit fragmented it's gotten better over time you know you used to be you know probably 10 years ago not so much you kind of had teams doing their own thing but we're, we're really driving that through a collaborative effort of all our coaches and coaches meetings and really talking about and, and teaching and, and going to their practices and having them come to ours having our kids participate in their stuff so that they can get that same level of culture implementation if you will for what we're trying to do yeah and but i think this is progress yeah, and it's a good time to do it. I mean, th there's no better time. The kids are sitting at home for a while. Like, you jump on those Zoom calls with you and their yeah. coach and bring in some – bring in a Lincoln. You bring in, a, I don't know, Jen Schroeder or somebody, and it really we builds got that, that going on. Uh, I think we're having that Thursday night with Jen. 
Yeah. So I'm that's cool. Thank with all the players and the organization Jen's going to be speaking to. And, you know, we've been doing other Zoom calls with some college coaches, talking to our coaches about various <laughs> things and, and just trying to help each other through this. Yeah, it's important. It's a great time to share information, I think, more than, you know, anything. Staying ready, sharing info, learning. Yeah, and I think I think we're going to come out of this, at least for me, I'm, I'm going to come out a better coach, a better business leader, and a better father because of that that piece of it. I, you know, I shared the other day on a, a, a men's group that I'm having, a group of entrepreneurs, and the one thing I, I've gotten better as a leader is communicating with my people here at my business and seeing the impact of having more open communication and more connection. And that's the same thing we're seeing with the team. And I, I just think there's a lot of growth opportunity through this that we can all be better. Yeah, that's cool. And, and I mean, I, you know, you just made, made a point. And, you know, I've seen you and your team at tournaments all over and for, for three years now. And I've seen other really good coaches with their teams. And that, that leadership and the family aspect of this thing is so important. So uh, you're, you're doing a great job with that. Um, what do you think, like, what would you say to the girls who are looking to be recruited? They're looking to find a college to go to in the next one, two, three years. Um, what advice do you have for them? You know, this is going to be a difficult time for those kids. I, mean, you know, I heard Jet, you and Jazz talking a little bit. And as the rosters are, are large, you know, I'm talking to a lot of college coaches, and next year they got 30, 31, 32 kids, and trying to figure out the roster piece. So I think it's going to be about communication, communication with your travel coach who's communicating with the college coaches and the places that you want to go and maybe you've been inter interacting with, and understanding roster fits moving forward and making sure you find the right fit for you at a place that you can go and contribute and not just, just be a number in that place and, and be ready to walk in and buy into whatever role that is. Yeah. I mean, smart. And I, I was on the phone, geez, yesterday, I think I was on the phone with uh, coach DeFeo Mercer yesterday. Yeah. And we were talking about some of this and she mentioned, you know, well, and Georgia is different from a lot of the country, but she did mention that, you know, she was on campus yesterday. Many coaches I talked to are not. And she thought that she was going to possibly be able to maybe run some camps. So, like, camps are going to be a big thing this summer if you can get to one to be seen. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what have you heard? Colleges are hosting them, and you can – well, I, I haven't heard any college camps going on right now. You know, things are, are still in a dead period, and, and – um I think you're going to find the colleges are going to keep the kids off the campuses for a while. Um, and I, and I think until, yeah. until they get to a place where, you know, the big conversation now we all love down here in the South is college football, right? So in, until the colleges get to a, a place and an answer, are they going to have fall sports? Or are they going to bring those athletes back on campus? I don't think they're going to allow any outsiders on campus until, until that piece is done, just from a liability standpoint. Um, so I still and you think guys play. Away. Yeah, you got you guys play high school softball in the fall too, so that yeah. I guess could be in jeopardy as well. Yeah, it's uh, that that's definitely going to be a question mark. You know, it, again, it's fluid. I I heard something this morning that maybe Cobb County was. You know, I don't want to start rumors, but that they might not go back to school till next January. So if that's the case, you know, that that's something that'll probably follow throughout all of Georgia. And if that's the decision they make, then there won't be any fall sports here for that. Um, yeah. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Let's hope. I mean, this is all a let's wait and see thing. So, yeah, yeah I don't know if anyone really knows. Yeah, it's tough, you know, because uh, uh, our, our kids are spread out throughout, uh, throughout the country. So half our roster was playing, you know, spring high school. Um, and, and, and most of those, those gals were seniors. So they, they lost out on their senior year of high school, which uh, is a huge thing for them. Yeah, and then they got to look forward to a summer that hopefully gets played. I mean, if you're, you know, you're their head guy. What, you know, if they're going to stay ready at home, what are your two tips for staying ready at home for your players? Uh, stay in shape, arm care, and, and, and pay attention to the little things, man. Be ready to go because what's going to happen is you don't know when this thing's going to open up, and it may open up, and all of a sudden our practice time is a lot less than it is. So you, you got to be in, in the right shape with your, with your arm care and your mechanics and what you're doing because you're getting ready to go play a lot of games before we can get you prepped. If you guys aren't able to travel around everywhere, what are you going to do? Play in local tournaments in Georgia? That's that's tough for us, right? Because I just like half my kids, kids are everywhere. I, I got kids from you know the state of Washington, Oklahoma, uh, you know Florida. Like they have to. If I say, hey, we're only going to play, you know, in the southeast, those kids still got to travel to get here. Um, so we're not 
kind of boxing ourselves in with that right now. We're staying open. And, and if, you know, PGF happens and SoCal A's Invitational happens and everything we're being told right now it is, we're, we're going to be there at those places. Um, I don't feel, you know, nervous about traveling. I think now is probably a time as any to fly. Um, with Dude, those, you can with do the standards and regulations that are going around. on. So. Get yourself a charter jet. There you go. Send it. Hey, send the Eastern private. Send the Eastern private plane. Pick us up. We can travel this style. Come on. We'll take a bus. We'll take a bus, we'll take a bus like John Madden. Madden. Yeah. There you go. We'll bust all over the place. There you go. All right. So any last Sweet. thoughts? I'll, the, I'll fly and meet them there. Hey, any last last tips to um for a for a you know a coach of a ten u twelve u fourteen u sixteen u team out there? What can he do to get his team ready during this time? Stay engaged. Kind of stay true to what your mission is, and make sure your mission is about doing what's right for your players and making them better people. And, and sticking to that, not making it wor worried about, hey, are we going to go play some games and win some games or anything about an outcome? I'm not a stats guy. I'm not a wins-loss guy. Um, I, I fully believe in doing everything to make everybody better and try to be the best that I can be, and the same thing for my players. So just, you know, staying true to that mission is going to help you long term, you know, when you're going through a pandemic or not. That's awesome. Well, hey, Pat, we appreciate you coming on today. Great representation for the Georgia Impact family. Um, we love our partnership with your club and you. Um, stay safe, stay ready, and uh, we will see you hopefully on the field this summer, man. Yeah, I hope so, buddy. Appreciate Easton and all your guys' support for us. Thanks for having me. You got it, dude. See ya. See you, BK.